Um, I'm not sure if you have read this article, but he came out and he was extremely op honest with what he's been through recently, especially last season. He was battling depression. He lost his father, following which his wife left him, took the kid away, and he mentioned the fact that it, he found it really hard to cope with the fact that his kid wasn't there just after losing his father. This built and built and built. He fell deep into depression. The club helped him. He mentioned they kept it quiet. But there's this myth and aura surrounding football players that they can't feel these things once they take to the pitch. They need to go and perform because of the amount of money they're making. Would you say that that's a valid point or some people at times have no idea what these people go through? Yes, yeah, some people don't have any idea what, what these players go through. Players are human beings. Players feel when loss, when you, when you lose a, a, a parent, it, it hurts. And then to, to your wife and the, the little one leave the home as well at the same time as you're dealing with loss of your father, I'm sure that must have been really weighing on his shoulders. But this is what a football club is for, Gary, isn't mm. it? You know, to, to help rally the, 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 the lad and to help him through it. And sometimes yeah. football can be a, an escape from the tough times. Yeah, and I think we have to uh, also make the point very clear that, you know, people in all walks of life have problems with various issues, depression, of course, being one of them. Um, and I think historically within football, it's been a subject that you've covered up because Why? you're... A, well, be, because you're, it's, it's a macho world and you're not allowed to show what is perceived to be a weakness. Well, it's not a weakness... It's an illness, yeah. is the truth of it. And I've heard so many people say, well, how on earth can he be depressed? Look how much money he earns. Look at this big house. Well, it's nothing to do with material right. things. It's an illness. And if depression bites you, it doesn't matter who you are. It bites you. And he mentioned the fact that it affected his entire season. Have you been in a dressing room where you've seen one of your, your teammates go through this and you've just reached out and try and help them solve it? Yeah, you do. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite an ironic that something like this comes up because normally these things, are, as, as we said earlier, are kept under wraps. Yep. Normally it's dealt with inside the dressing room. You police it and the club deal with it. And, you know, sometimes when it's dealt with inside the club and then these things leak out, the public tend to look badly on the player because, as Gary rightly said, you're earning great money, you know, you shouldn't have any problems. But the problems are there. The problems don't shy away because you earn great money. Mm. You, these are things that people have to deal with and it's very difficult to differentiate because when you cross that white line, the fan base are not interested in what the problems are yeah. and it's, sometimes it's difficult to juggle it. Gary? Yeah, it's, it's a very complex and difficult subject, to be honest with you. Um, and as I said a moment ago, you know, it isn't only associated with football players, sports people. It is associated with anybody and everybody in the world. It can get to people. It's a, it's a tough place out there for everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but what you're just trying to say is that it's gotten better as time has progressed from your playing days. Well, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so. What's happening at clubs now? There's so much more staff at football clubs now to be able to help and deal with yeah. this type of stuff. You know, when when we were coming through, it was mostly the dressing room that that would look after these things, and then probably the management would would get involved. Now they've got so many different pieces to the puzzle that can help and psychologists yeah. and stuff like that. From, from my playing days, I do not know of anybody who was suffering from depression, but I'll guarantee there were loads. And looking back, I think the way a lot of the players from my era maybe dealt with this type of situation was they were on the, the booze, on the, to yeah, be honest with you. Drink, yeah. um, and there were a number of players at various clubs that I was at, looking back, I think they were... Well, I think they were alcoholics, to be perfectly honest with you. Mm. I really do. And maybe they used that to cover up some of the issues. It's escapism. Because what people don't understand, there's a lot of pressure to perform and to get results, mm. etc. And how do, you, how do you get away from it all? Because you've yeah. got to de-stress. Yeah. It's, 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 it's so intense you need to de-stress. And back in the day, a lot of lads hit the bottle. 
yeah. you know, there used to be drinking culture and stuff like that. It's changed now, mm. but the drinking culture used to at least let the guys relax a little bit. And it doesn't help at times when you're doing badly and you have about 50,000 people booing you. What does that feel like for someone watching at home who's never had that experience of playing football at the highest level? You're on the stadium and it's not going perfect for you in your personal life. And you take to the pitch and nothing is working for you. What does it feel like? Well, it feels like you're sinking. It feels like you're in quicksand and it feels like you're sinking because whatever you try mm. doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't come off and you know the fans are against you. And it doesn't just stop when the game finishes because when you're coming out of the, into the, your car, the car park, the fans are at you. When you're going home, they're on the radio, which is, was then wasn't social media, the fans are at you and they boo you. So <laughs> when you're taking that throughout your day and people won't, people won't even clap you or talk to you, they'll blank you. So you know whether you've performed or not. So you carry it with you like a millstone around you until you just have to battle through it. And that's the tough thing. It's very difficult to battle through it, to get past it. So that's why a lot of guys would take things to, to de-stress them, alcohol or whatever. Yeah. You know, when, when you asked Kevin that question, I thought his answer was going to be, I never had any bad times <laughs> as a player. No. no we, all, we, all know we all go through just, it, don't we? we you yeah, know. exactly. You know, even, even the best players you know, have a, a downturn in their form and, and the fans, supposedly the fans, they're the first ones to, to jump on you. They, they don't help you. They don't, they, I don't think they realise what they're doing. Yeah. I can remember a time at, at Spurs, for example, where I'm out on the park warming up and they, they start to announce the team because the, the team is being made public and at Spurs at the time, Ray Clements in goal, big cheer. Um, Glenn Hoddle in midfield, big cheer. Gary Stevens, boo. And that, that was kind of... Yeah, I've had that. I've had that at Arsenal. I've had that, I've had that at Forest. It happens because the expectation, and it's, it's probably due to the level that you've played at, yeah. they know the level you're playing at. And when you don't hit those levels, there's always going to be a scapegoat. Mm. And if you're the scapegoat, <laughs> yeah. it's not nice, is it, Gary? It's not it's, pleasant. It's actually horrible yeah. when, you, when you're a scapegoat. But you have to have thick skin. And you have to you have to get through it. 